Hello everyone, this is Jim Nix, and in this video we are going to discuss workflow ideas and inspiration for landscape images. I'll walk you through a full edit of this photo, showing you how we go from the before image to the after image. And of course, I will share some of my favorite filters for use on landscape images. So let's go ahead and get started. Because this is a landscape image, I'm going to take advantage of the landscape workspace to begin editing this photo. I just click on the drop down menu in my workspaces section and I choose landscape from that menu. It'll auto populate all of the filters from that workspace in my filter editing panel. Now this is a raw file that I'm editing so I'm going to begin with the raw develop filter which is here at the top. It's new in Luminar 2018 and it gives you powerful control over your raw files and it's really a great place to start. I'll also begin by looking at the histogram. If you notice there are these triangles you can click in each corner. I'm going to go ahead and click those and what they do is they identify areas that are either too dark or that are blown out and this will help guide me in my editing. Now the image is a little bit flat because it is a raw file so I'll begin with a slight increase in contrast. Something like that I think looks good. Now I'm going to reduce the highlights pretty substantially and you can see how this is impacting the blown out spots from the histogram. I think we're in much better shape now. Lastly, I'm going to increase clarity somewhat, just a little bit, about like that. Clarity adds selective contrast in the midtones, and it does provide some additional depth to the image. So I think that's about it for the raw develop filter. We're going to move on. Next up is the Accent AI filter, which uses artificial intelligence to analyze your image and make adjustments to bring great results. It's a filter that's unique to Luminar, and it's very powerful. I'm going to go ahead and slide this a bit to the right, and as you can see, it has a nice impact on the photo. I think at this point, I'll go ahead and turn off the hot pixels and the cold pixels on the histogram, as I no longer need them to guide me. I'm now going to use the adjustable gradient filter, which is right here, because I feel that the bottom section of the photo is a little bit dark. This filter is great at selectively adjusting exposure. I'll choose bottom, and then I'll move the exposure slider to the right. I think about there looks great, and you can see the impact on the photo immediately. Here's a before and an after for comparison purposes. Next up, we're going to saturation and vibrance, which is right here. There's already a lot of natural color in this shot, so I'm going to skip the saturation slider entirely because it adjusts the intensity of all the colors in the photo. Instead, I'm going to bump up vibrance just a little bit because it only adjusts the intensity of the more muted colors, ignoring the colors that are already well saturated. This helps me keep the photo from becoming too oversaturated, but it does give a nice little color boost to the overall look of the shot. Here's a before and an after. I think that looks nice. I won't be using the advanced contrast filter, so I can click the red X in the bottom right corner and remove it from my filter panel. I will use polarizing filter, however. It works great on both water and skies, and it helps cut through atmospheric haze while making blues deeper. Just a slight adjustment here will really help a lot. I think something like that. I won't be using foliage enhancer or dehaze either in this photo, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those. However, I'm going to use Golden Hour. Golden Hour is great for adding a warm touch to a shot, and it helps accentuate the sunlight that's already there. So I'm going to make a slight bump in the amount and a little bit to the saturation as well. Here's a before and an after. You can see that it's warmed up the photo nicely. As I scroll down, next up is curves and LUT mapping, and I'm going to skip both of those, so once again I'll click the red X and remove those from my filter panel. Next up is the structure filter, and it's great at enhancing clarity and improving perceived detail. It really helps make a photo pop. So I'm going to add it in this photo to the distant mountains and the foreground rocks via a filter mask. First, I move the slider to adjust it to my liking. I think about there is good. And now I'm going to click on the brush icon and choose brush. I think my brush is about the right size, and I'm just going to paint it into these mountains. And something like that I think looks good. Now with the right bracket key, I'll make my brush larger, and I'm going to continue painting to this side of the photo. I'm also going to paint these rocks in the foreground. If you ever want to check your mask, you can click on this eyeball icon and see where your mask has been applied. 
You can see that I've missed some spots, so I'm going to go back over them and just tidy up this mask a little bit. As you can see, I accidentally dragged it across the lake, so I can just choose a race and remove that. And now I click paint again, left bracket key to shrink my brush, and just continue painting my mask until it covers the area that I would like to cover. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, something about like that. There we go. I'm going to click the eyeball again to hide the mask. And I've now painted that mask into just the rocks and the mountains. Now let me zoom in and show you the difference this filter made. There's a zoomed in section of the photo. And let me turn off the filter mask. And as you can see, there's the before and there's the after. It really does increase perceived detail and help that photo really pop. I'm going to return to fit to screen. And now that I'm satisfied, I'll just click done and I've completed that step. Now we've got a lot of filters open and still a few more to get to. So if you ever feel like you have too many filters open and just want to clean up your workspace, you can easily do that by going into single view mode. Just go to the top menu and choose filters and single view mode. And as you can see, all my filters have now collapsed or closed. Now, if you want to open a filter, you can just click on the little arrow there and it'll open the filter and one more click will close it. Also, if you have a filter open and would like to open another one, if you choose that new one, the previous open one will close. I'm going to go ahead and open image radiance and remove that and open vignette and remove it as well as I don't plan to use either one of those filters on this photo. However, there are a couple more edits that I'd like to make to the photo, so I'm going to add two more filters. I'm going to click on Add Filters, and I'm going to go choose Dodge and Burn and HSL. There's HSL, and there's Dodge and Burn, and I'll click on Add Filters to close that filter panel. Let me open up HSL so you can see what I'm doing. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, and I've added it here because the blue color is just a little too intense and a little too blue. HSL is perfect for reducing individual color saturation levels. So now that the filter is open, make sure you're on the proper tab. You can see there's a tab for hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm on the saturation tab, and I can just grab the blue slider and reduce it by dragging it to the left. Let me show you the before and the after. I just pulled down the saturation of the blue selectively, and I think that looks really good. Now I'm going to open Dodge and Burn. and As you can see, that'll close the HSL filter automatically. Dodge and Burn allows you to paint brush strokes to either lighten or darken specific parts of an image. So I've added it here because I want to add a little bit more drama to the image by selectively darkening a spot. You just click on Start Painting, and you'll see the menu opens up. You can choose Lighten or Darken. I'm going to go with Darken here. Then you can check the size of your brush. I'm going to go ahead and shrink my brush. And you can choose Strength. I'm going to reduce Strength to about 20%, something like that. And all I'm going to do is paint over these trees, because I just want to add a little bit more darkness in this area to remove any visual distraction that the brighter trees may provide. Now, that didn't really do enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and increase Strength. And I'm going to bring that up to about 30. I think about there looks good. And now I'm just going to continue painting, this time with the darker strength setting. And as you can see, it is darkening the area quite a bit more than the previous 20% selection did. I like that, so I'm going to say done. And now I can show you a before and an after. That just allowed me to create a little bit more contrast in that area by darkening the trees. Many times on landscape images, I like to apply a bit of noise reduction in the sky as a finishing touch. So I'm going to click on Add Filters, and I'm going to choose Denoise. And then once again, click Add Filter to close the filter catalog. OK, so we have Denoise. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And you can see that you have two options here. The Luminosity slider handles basic noise, while the Color slider works on chromatic noise. I'll slide both of them a bit to the right in order to create a smoother look in the sky and smooth out those clouds a little bit. Let me zoom in and show you a before and after. OK, here's the before. You can see a little bit of noise there. Not a lot, but just a little bit in the clouds. And here's the after. So I think that looks good. 
I'm going to go ahead and fit to screen, but now we need to filter mask it. So in order to create a filter mask, I just click on the brush icon and then choose brush. And you can see that it's now ready for me to paint in the sky. Just be sure to check your size, softness, and opacity. But once you have that to your liking, just go ahead and begin painting. And I'm just going to kind of mouse over the sky here and apply that noise reduction selectively. I can click on that icon and I can see that I missed a few spots. I'm just going to come around here for a little touch up. And I think that looks good. And so I'll say done. Now, if you like this look, this is a great time to save both the preset and a workspace. I like the look that we've achieved here, and I want to be able to access it again quickly. So first I'll save this as a preset. Just click on this Save Filters Preset button in the bottom right corner and give it a name. I will call this one a Great Landscape. Then just click on Create New Preset, and it's saved in your User Preset folder. If you would like to see that preset, you can click on your presets and then go to user, user presets, and you can see a great landscape is right here. You can click the preset icon again to close that. Now next you may want to save this collection of filters as a workspace. So just click on the workspace icon and choose save as new workspace and then give it a title. I will call this one mountains and click save new workspace. If you'd like to find that workspace, it's in your workspace drop down folder right there. And that about covers it for this video. This landscape started out as a nice view of a beautiful location, but it was lacking overall punch. Let me show you the before and the after. And here's a split screen sliding view of the before and the after. You can see that we've come a long way. We used various filters in Illuminar. And taking advantage of the power of the product, I was able to really bring this landscape photo to life. Thanks a lot for watching.